If you compare a motorcycle to a car in terms of safety, the motorcycle is simply a two-wheel coffin. You are literally holding on to your dear life in a motorcycle. Whereas in cars, you are cocooned inside a very rigid shell with all the luxury and the comfort. But the recent advancements made in the research and development of the motorcycle safety have made the motorcycle a much safer mode of transportation than it ever was. Today, we will look at a certain technology which revolutionized the motorcycle safety, the traction control system. The basic function of a traction control system on a motorcycle is to detect the wheel spin and reduce it to a safe level. The initial information required for the traction control system for this purpose is the wheel speed of each individual wheel. The system acquires this data from the wheel speed sensor. This is the same sensor which is used to detect the deceleration of each wheel to activate the ABS. But with the advanced algorithm of the traction control system, the same sensor can be used to monitor the acceleration of each wheel. Almost all of the manufacturers utilizes this sensor to get the data, except for the MV Agusta, which monitors the engine speed exclusively for the spike in RPM. A jump in the engine speed that exceeds the acceptable limit dictated by the ECU's preset algorithm is viewed as wheel slip. It is possible to make the traction control system work based on this information alone, but the system will only intervene once the wheel spin occurs. This might work well at low speeds, but at higher speeds, it doesn't stand a chance in preventing the crash. For that, the system should be able to predict the wheel spin before it happens. In order to do so, we need to have the information about the torque being delivered to the rear wheel. Since most of the modern bikes are fuel injected, that information is readily available. The traction control system acquires this information from various engine sensors through ECU. The information from the throttle position sensor, camshaft position sensor, crankshaft position sensor, etc. is analyzed by the traction control system's algorithm. Then using the dry line gear ratio, tire radius, rider mass, all of which are subjected to change, the system predicts the wheel spin. This information is enough for a basic traction control system to work. But this system will fail to answer one question. When will the acceleration force exceed the tire's grip? The tire's grip limit isn't constant. The tire's ability to propel a motorcycle forward under acceleration is reduced as the motorcycle leans into a corner. To answer that question, some additional information are needed. Information about the longitudinal and lateral acceleration, roll and yaw rate are necessary for this task. Normally, dual accelerometers and dual gyroscopes are used to measure these parameters. This method of traction control system is a fairly advanced one, but even this is not fail-proof. Electronic aids that require accelerometers are typically more difficult to implement on motorcycle than on cars, just because of the fact that motorcycles have to lean into corners. A sensor sitting flat on the floor of a car will measure the three-axis acceleration just fine in most instances, but on a motorcycle, it encounters trouble as the sensor must lean with the motorcycle. But that can be solved by more advanced initial measurement unit or otherwise known as IMU. The initial measurement unit is a self-contained system that measures the linear and angular motion usually with the combination of gyroscopes and accelerometers. It can be gimbal or strapped down like in a motorcycle. It measures the roll rate, yaw rate, longitudinal acceleration, transverse acceleration and vertical acceleration of a motorcycle. The lean angle and the pitch angle can also be calculated using the same sensor. Information about the wheel speeds and other motorcycle specific parameters like the tire size, geometric installation location of the sensor are required for this calculation. This processed information from the IMU can be used not only for predicting the wheel spin but also for controlling the wheel slide during the corner exit. It's not just the traction control. Using the information from the IMU, a whole lot of other features can be implemented in the motorcycle like the wheelie control, launch control, semi-active chassis control, etc. Finally, predicting the wheel spin is not enough. It must reduce the wheel spin back to a safe level. Manufacturers have different approaches to this task. One of the popular methods is to cut out a cylinder by skipping the fuel injection event. A cylinder drop will have an immediate torque response. The torque supply can be reduced up to 100% using this method. Next one is the ignition retardation method. It also has an immediate response. But it only has a limited authority in controlling the torque supply. You cannot drop the torque supply more than 20% without causing a misfire. And the last one is the closing the throttle. It is only possible in a motorcycle with electronic throttle control. It offers fine modulation and wide range of authority. 
you can drop the torque supply up to 100% but comparing to the other two it is slow to response. If you guys enjoyed this video please hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more. See you guys next time. Bye.